I have bought and owned the SVS Ultra Tower speakers in the past. And those conditions were very, very different from the conditions I'm listening to right now. And I'll explain further about that in this video. But has my thoughts changed? And if so, how? Let's talk about it in this video. So the reason I revisited the SVS is none other than the fact that my Patreon, one of them, had decided to move to a different province in Canada. And since he lived close, he decided to lend me the SVS Ultra Tower speakers so that I can sell it for him. In the meantime, I did get to enjoy the SVS Ultra speakers. And I did this because I was curious myself because dating way back, I actually bought and used the SVS Ultra speakers in my sound system. Now. A little rewind into that story. So dating back to when I used to work at the high-end retail store, and I know some of you guys are already rolling their eyes, going again, again, Jay, about the high-end retail store. But hear me out. It's an important part of my journey, and that's why I'm talking about it. Anyways, my friend's client was setting up his home theater system. So I went on the installation. He was changing from SVS system to something more of a higher caliber. I think it was Wilson Audio, but I could be wrong. But the guy clearly was into this because he had a home theater system and a room dedicated to it, like a mini home theater system with multiple rows of, of professional seats and stuff. And the room was blacked out as a home theater system should be, but also it was dead quiet. The room was soundproof so that the sound doesn't leak out and bother the neighbors or you know his, his uh, significant other or whatnot. He wanted to just rock out in there. So kudos to him. But he had the SVS Ultra Towers there, and of course, we wanted to hear the before and after, so he played a little few tracks for us in that SVS home theater system. And in that two-channel uh, track that he played, I was hearing the SVS Ultra Towers that was his left and right channel. And I was blown away. In that room, that speaker pounded with bass, authority, and sparkle, and dynamics that I was so happy to hear. So eventually, of course, I do what I do, do what Jay does, and go and buy an SVS speaker online on that night. So I went online and searched up the used market and found a pair of Mint SVS Ultra Towers. And with full excitement, you can just imagine me just riled up, I wanted the speaker. So I went and bought this affordable speaker at the time, and especially in the used market, and I set it up in my room and I was so disappointed. I still remember trying multiple mediocre gear I had at the time. And I was just trying multiple different positioning and mind you, that room was not treated and I was trying to finesse it somehow to make it sound right and it just wouldn't sound right. And let me explain what I heard. First of all, I heard really good bass. The bass was you know, really, really exaggerated, especially because of the room gain in that untreated room. But I was still happy with the amount of bass or the bass quality. That was not the issue. The issue was the mid-range sounded a little bit flat and sucked out and the high frequency was bright and, and, and beaming. And I just couldn't enjoy music that I enjoyed. Of course, that was an untreated room and this was way before I had my YouTube channel. So thank God I didn't share that experience because that would have been totally wrong. Now fast forward to today. I have them again in my room. Now a whole different situation with gear that I had not been able to use before. Also a room that I wasn't uh, able to have back then. So a lot has changed since then. And what do I think about the SVS Ultra Towers today? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, first off, SVS, credit where it's due. The build quality is excellent. This one is in piano gloss finish, which isn't my favorite because it is prone to micro scratches and fingerprints a lot more than their non-gloss finish that they have, which I personally prefer in terms of just keeping the aesthetics going. Anyways, the SVS Ultra Towers are a 3.5 way design that is using a one inch aluminum dome tweeter and dual 6.5 mid-range drivers, and also a horizontally opposed eight inch woofers. And man, for the amount of money you're paying, that is an impressive number of drivers and a configuration that is to be behold. 
and to be given credit for. Now, with all that being said, SVS raised this speaker down to 28 hertz plus minus 3 dB. Now, that is one heck of a number to provide because that's almost full range of a speaker at this price point of $2,600 for a tower speaker this size, which is pretty impressive on paper. Now, right off the bat, the bass has nothing to be complained about. The bass is great. I mean, the bass pounds, and I can definitely confirm that it is almost full range to where I really don't have any problems with the bass quality or quantity. And that is expected because SVS is a subwoofer company mainly. Again, credit where credit is due. SVS makes some excellent affordable subwoofers for home theaters and music, and they have been around and making great customer service. And that's another thing that I have to give them credit for. Great customer service, one of the best in the industry regarding that. So they have been known to be a great subwoofer company. So bass, as expected, is amazing. It extends low, it hits hard, it punches home, and the bass is dynamic, contrasty, and punchy, and I would say pretty accurate with a little bit of exaggeration, and, but that's okay. You know, I like bass, and like my favorite friends ever said, more bass, the better. There's never too much bass. But of course, there is of course a possibility of too much bass, especially in an untreated room like my previous experience, then it can get boomy because of the sheer amount of bass this speaker provides. So that is exciting. At the same time, it is something that you should be watching out for if you have an untreated room and if you decide to purchase these. Now, moving on to the mid-range and the high frequency. Now, mid-range is nowhere as bad as I make out to be in the beginning of this video where I treated, I put it in an untreated room. In that situation, yes, that room had problems and the mid-range was no fault of the Ultra Towers. The mid-range in this treated room is now more natural and crisp like SVS promises on their website. However, the upper mid-range still for me doesn't replicate that excellent experience I had in that dead sounding room. And I have a theory as to why. Probably because that you know, dead room was probably taking a lot of that high frequency and upper mid-range energy and bringing it down by a lot. So it sounded more balanced and airy and sparkly rather than bright or shrill. Now my room is not a home theater room, it is a sound room. So it has a lot of diffusion and absorption mixed in. So it is not a totally dead sounding room or a overly lively sounding room. So therefore the SVS sound a little bit thin in the mid range to me still in this room, but it is nowhere as bad as I you know, experienced in my past uh, untreated room. Now, the upper mid-range for me is the biggest problem that I see. For example, when I play tracks from Mick Key, for example, the elect the, the, not the electric guitars, the guitars sound a little bit too aggressive to me. It sounds a little bit too forward and, uh, and, and bright for my personal liking. But you know what? If you're a fan of Focal or Magical, well, this speaker is pretty darn impressive in terms of being that kind of revealing and a little bit more forward sound on that upper mid-range area. Now, moving on to the high frequency, again, the high frequency isn't bad at all. Yes, I can definitely tell that it's a metal dome tweeter, and even if you blinded me and told me to guess, I would have probably guessed, yep, metal dome tweeter, because I do hear a little bit of hardness to the tweeter, but again, it is not that bad. It's a little bit hard sounding, but it has that sparkle, and if you are a fan of Metal Dome tweeters, yes, it has that sparkly uh, Metal Dome effect, if you will. But personally, for me, it, it's a little bit edgy and unrefined for my personal liking. Now, moving on to sound staging and imaging. Now, sound staging, honestly speaking, pretty adequate. I don't have much problem with sound staging for a floor stander. It throws a pretty decent sound stage, and really, they don't entirely disappear. I can still tell that they're coming from the speakers. But you know what? They're tower speakers, so that's fine. There's no discredit to SVS's efforts on these speakers. And did I mention this speaker is almost a decade old in design, meaning it's been released over almost a decade ago. So 
That means it's been around for a long time and not been discontinued and loved by many, including home theater people, which I totally understand. This is a great middle ground for home theater and music if you are about that entertainment setup for $2,600, which is also an affordable, you know, achievable category. So I totally understand that this is a very hot speaker and you know what? I see why. Now, in terms of imaging, the imaging in the center is pretty darn excellent, especially considering that I had these speakers face directly out towards the room because when I faced them towards my ears, I was like, ah, ah, too bright for my liking. So I pulled them out and it was a lot more forgiving. It was a lot less bright to my ears and I was able to hear it for long periods of time. And best of all, the imaging was still dead center. So imaging, no problem whatsoever. I think within the soundstage given, it is not throwing the largest soundstage or the smallest soundstage I've ever heard. It is a pretty middle ground, you know, acceptable soundstage. And within that given soundstage, the imaging capability to the side, instruments, all of it is excellent. Phantom Center, all of it. However, in my experience with these speakers, I did find that they throw a more of a wall of sound, like a 2D sound rather than a 3D sound that's holographing and all around me and stuff like that, that I usually like. However, I also noticed that it's not exactly like a wall of sound. You know what, there is some of that 3D happening, on, especially on certain tracks, but it's most of the time a wall of sound uh, but it doesn't seem congested or it doesn't feel like it's a totally flat wall of sound. So it's pretty entertaining and again, pretty enjoyable, but it's nothing crazy and they did a pretty good job considering again that this speaker has been out for a decade. And again, in terms of positioning of the speakers, I've tried a lot in the past in the untreated room and also in the treated room today. Now in the treated room, I tried multiple things, but most importantly, I faced them directly out towards the room, which made it sound so much more enjoyable to my ears. And I played around with the wall distance from the wall behind the speakers because it is a ported design and it's pretty a uh, heavy and weighty speaker. So it does have really good bass authority, like I said, but it's a double-edged sword, right? You want good bass authority, but if you put it too close to the wall, then it's gonna start booming and uh, can be boomy and have unwanted effects. So be careful about how you distance them but I would say that around two to three feet away from the wall and they were just perfectly fine. And honestly, even closer to that, some may actually prefer that presentation, especially like some of my friends that really like bass, then you know, you're know you set. Because personally for me, I like a more linear bass rather than an exaggerated bass. But if you like a little bit more exaggerated bass, it doesn't totally get boomy if you put it closer to the wall, like 1.5 feet, it's still okay, you know, yeah, a little bit more exaggeration, but it's nowhere muddy or boomy kind of sound. And of course, I tried multiple type of gear to see what works best with it from a Onkyo receiver to a monoblock from Burson that I just reviewed to a Vincent hybrid amplifier to a tube amplifier like the Washington or the Fluxion Audio KT88 design. And I have to say that most of it sounded pretty darn similar. Uh, when I usually gear match, I expect a bigger change than what I heard with the SVS, but whatever I put into it, whether the receiver or whether the Burson, yes, I heard a difference with more quality gear in terms of a little bit more sound staging, a little bit more of an ease of presentation, especially with the Vincent Hybrid. I was my favorite pairing because it has tone controls and I can adjust the high frequency a little bit if I find it a little bit bright with some tracks like the McKee like I was talking about. But overall, I didn't think that it was taking on the character of the amplifier too much. It pretty much stood its ground and said, this is my sound signature. I don't care what amplifier you plug me into, I'm going to do what I do. And so there you go. Even if you have a receiver, which makes total sense because a lot of people use this for home theater speakers, it will sound still great and will sound what SVS has intended it to sound. So overall, my impression of these speakers is that they are excellent speakers that has lasted almost an entire decade. Yes, there is ton of competition these days, especially in this price bracket that I personally prefer. However, I would say the SVS for certain people that are looking for both home theater and music and just want a speaker that sounds like the SVS sound that I described, I would say it's an excellent choice, even at the current date, uh, which is something to be said. I mean, 
it is a almost a decade old speaker. And honestly, it has been a very interesting experience for me because I wanted to try it out in this room to see if my experience has changed from when I had it in the past and that horrendous experience that I had and to see if you know the SVS Ultra Tower speakers and my impressions of them has changed over time. Have you ever tried a speaker that you had before in a different room and found your experiences to be totally different or maybe not totally different, but much better? Well, let me know in the comment section. So that's pretty much it from me. Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful to you, please click that like button. It does help me out tremendously on this channel and it doesn't cost you anything. And make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss the next video and I'll see you guys on the next one. Until next time, peace. Shh.